I always joke that I'm born from like an anonymous source because I am. <laughs> As an adoptee, I have a birth mother that was like real, but it's in my head. You know what I mean? It's real, but it only exists in my head because I have no evidence of what it was like. Like in my head, I villainized her because she was the reason why I felt all those things because she's the reason why like I'm adopted. Somebody brought me into this world, like carried me in their stomach for months on end, nine months, and then gave birth to me and just walked away with no explanation. Today's video, I believe, is called um i stopped hating my birth mother and then my life got better if it's not called that it was gonna be called that <laughs> like uh me just talking through my feelings of adoption in the way that there's some pretty ugly things that i've thought and there's some pretty ugly sad lonely feelings that i've had in relation to my adoption that have led up to this point of me now just truly forgiving and letting go and really just optimizing my life and like optimizing the thoughts I think about my origin in order to heal my inner child um also like socially I feel like there is the idea of there's the adoptee who unfortunately just had to be given up and then there's the birth parent who is there the main story in like society is like when we look at adopted kids and this is in this one book called um uh what the heck is it called um something about transracial adoptees what white parents need to know about what transracial adoptees and it's in it pointed out the idea that like most of the time in society there's the adoptee there's the birth mother or the birth family and then there's the adopted family the adoptee is the one that's like seen as you know like the entity to be had and then the birth mother is like kind of the villain in the story of like the adoption because it's like oh she couldn't like provide a life for this child oh this like mother you know is like a birth mother is basically like so broken that she has to give up her child and then the child is like this prized possession that like goes to the adopted family and the adopted family looks like heroes essentially like i am probably extremely distorting it but for the most part that's a through line for through for a lot of adoptive stories is like there's the adopted kid who is like oh my goodness oh no who's gonna get this child and then it's like the adopted family yay and then it's like thank you birth mother you did your job now you can deal with a life full of like regret and pain on your own you know what i mean um and then you're just like not really going to be acknowledged unless somebody asks like do you keep in contact with your birth family and if you're like no then it's like well i'll never bring it up again because that's all we need to know about like your birth family at the end of the day like um it's taken me a while to like to even really just humanize my birth mother in my head because uh up until you know a couple years ago I was a child I guess <laughs> and um I just like I said I, I don't it's hard to associate my feelings of just like having no knowledge of who the heck she is um with like the feelings of no that was like a human being who brought me into this world who maybe had a plan for me or maybe didn't or maybe was abused or you know it's like hard for me to really feel like she could be somebody who could be like me unless I really put like a lot of effort into that thought um so I was thinking about that the other day and I posted a video about uh what I would say to my birth mother um if I just like had her attention or if I if she was able to listen to me and I got really emotional because it made me think about and you can listen to that video I'm not going to regurgitate every single thing I said in that video maybe I'm going to re regurgitate a couple things but basically for the first time I had an empathetic thought about my birth family and my birth mother and for the first time I stopped making them the villain in my story because I for my whole entire life really the root of my feeling insecure and unstable and um just 
feeling like I just wasn't a person of value at the core of it really is just like well like I'm adopted so that's like you're automatically the black sheep you're automatically like different like in your own family not even just at school or in work environments or whatever like from your your very beginning you were abandoned like somebody didn't want you like that was your start and um that's like not it's not something I believe now but as a kid like 100% something that it was in my subconscious and maybe even came into like my very conscious thoughts when I was a teenager when you know when you're like really insecure but um and and for a long time I was like well it's because of my birth mother like forget a birth father forget a birth sibling like forget all of that at the end of the day the mother in my opinion like makes a decision like I don't I don't know anything about that situation like maybe even wasn't up to her I have no idea but in my head I villainized her because she was the reason why I felt all those things because she's the reason why like I'm adopted and oh, I really want to reiterate I love my life I'm so grateful that I have the people that I have in my life um god I really don't want to cry I really don't want to cry I really don't um but um there will just always be a piece that's missing always and instead of having a lot of anger and rage related to that I'm choosing now as an adult to have genuine empathy and like care and love and joy towards my birth mother because it just it's all of the reasons why I hated or like didn't want to think about the idea of my birth mother was because it was rooted in like hurt and hatred and now I'm focused more on I'm I'm focused more on the idea that like I'm proud of my life you know what I mean I have a a husband I have a like cute little apartment that I love walking into every single day um I have a family who like encouraged me to be who I am um I have like this cute little YouTube channel that I get to express myself on I have so much like I live in abundance you know what I mean and I don't know if she had that option but I hope so like and so a little bit of me no a lot of me feels like the need to place the idea that like my mother like did her best um and like I'm making this all up in my head you know what I mean like my mother could be a horrible person she could also be the best person on earth she could be whatever but I have this idea in my head of my mother that heals my inner child and makes me feel like I should be a better person because that's like what I need and it's kind of selfish but it's also like if I think of my mother as somebody who I want to recognize that like has given me up for good like I want to live my life for good because I don't want to start crying I really don't I want to live my life for good and I want it to be worth what she gave up you know can you imagine spending nine months knowing that you were going to give birth to somebody or maybe not even knowing maybe just for a couple of those months and then giving birth and then you don't even get to spend your life with your child that is so incredibly sad and I feel so attached to that idea that I want my life to be lived to the fullest extent. I want my life to be something I'm so proud of because I I want to do it a little bit for her. Like, I want her to be... I want her to be my driving force, you know? Like, thank you for giving me up because, like, you gave my adoptive mom. It feels so stupid even calling my mom my adopted mom. Like, that's my mom, okay? 
she gave my adoptive mom a daughter. She gave like my siblings another sibling, like another daughter. Um, and she gave my husband a wife. She gave, I don't know, like a, <laughs> there's a lot of me that I just feel so proud of. Like, I feel so proud to have been able to have made my life into something that I'm proud of and I want to make her proud too. Even though, like, I will never know her. But the idea that I have in my head of her is something I want. Something I want to, like, live for a bit. And I don't hate that. Like, I don't hate her. I'm not angry at her. I just want it to drive me to do good because she gave me up like at the end of the day I don't know what her intention was I don't know why it happened but at the end of the day I don't know her and she and that must be devastating and so hard to live with but I want to make her giving me up like worth it even if it's just in my head you know but yeah um, thank you so much for watching this channel. I have no idea if anybody even stayed. Uh, like, watch time is so hard sometimes because, like, when you review shows, the watch time is like, oh, people stayed for at least 10 minutes, but then you, like, you, like, open up about something that's so vulnerable and, like, impersonal to you, and it's like, people left within the first 30 seconds, so, like, do better next time. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I really hope that you found something of value in this video uh, because I really did like just being able to talk about this really speaks to my inner child and heals her and every time I like walk to not every time but sometimes even when I walk to work I just think like I hope I'm making you proud like my mom like I hope I'm living the life that she like always envisioned for me and See, I even think like this channel, like I hope that she like would like these videos, you know what I mean? <laughs> so silly and um it's a little bit dramatic, but I mean like it kind of drives me and like keeps me going. So yeah. I hope you like this and I hope you have a good morning, afternoon, or night.